Our third speaker is Sandra Navarro. Sandra is a friend of mine, and it's always interesting to introduce a friend. We're not besties, but we know one another, and we run in these circles together for a few years. In fact, Sandra used to walk around this Atlanta Expo floor and interview many of these business owners and many of you attendees regarding your experience here. She is a trusted voice in the plant-based community. Uh, a lucid thinker, a keen and sharp eye, an individual that gets how all the small pieces have come together. And she's used this historically as a public relations expert, and now as a writer, editor, marketer. I mean, just, I don't know what Sandra is not uh, a, a material expert on. But most importantly, her heart beats with the animals. It beats with the vegan movement. She's here to represent and to help guide us through our ability to think through how best to communicate what it is that matters to us to everyone around us. Right, Sandra? So would you please welcome to our presidential stage as our opening speaker today, Sandra Navarro. Thanks, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Planted Expo. First thing I want to do is see who's with me in this room. Fellow vegans, where are you at? Yes, amazing. There's always a few people in a room, but this room's a little different. Business owners, founders, all right, yes, thank you. Now there's one beautiful thing that unites us all, whether you're vegan, omnivore, or a business owner, and it's this. Oh, not that. Everyone's a marketer. So if you've got a smartphone with a camera, congratulations, you're a marketer, and you didn't even need a marketing degree or diploma to become one. In late 2022, I published the world's first vegan marketing book, Vegan Marketing Success Stories, and it was featured in over 70 media and podcasts. And the top two questions that I was asked by podcast hosts, especially if they were vegan, were, how do we get more people to go vegan? And what's the difference between marketing a conventional business and a vegan one? So I'm going to answer those two questions for you today. Let's start with how we get more people to go vegan. Early last year, I came across this really complicated looking infographic that summarized the results of two studies that Phonolytics did in 2021. And they asked people, what made you initially transition into a 100% plant-based diet? And I combined the results of that study with another big survey that VOMAD did in 2018 that asked folks what initially made you transition to become vegan. And I combined those and published a blog post with my own conclusion. So my top recommended tactics to get people to go vegan include number one, documentaries. The VOMAD survey said that Earthlings, What the Health and Cowspiracy were the top three documentaries that got them to start going vegan. I absolutely recommend Earthlings. It's free to watch online. And that's the one that got me started on my vegan transition. Number two are conversations with family and friends. This is great news for all y'all vegans in the crowd because just by having conversations with your loved ones, chances are you will influence their behavior. Combine that with watching a documentary with your loved ones and you've got a pretty powerful formula. Then we have social media posts. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, blogs or online or newspaper articles and talks either in classrooms or at events like this. Then your middle of the road, not as successful tactics include internet videos, handing out flyers, non-disruptive protests so these are things like the cube of truth that you may have seen in downtown vancouver following celebrities and books and finally not as recommended tactics include disruptive protests so these are things like pouring cow's milk on the floor of grocery stores uh, vandalizing government buildings pouring red paint on people wearing fur coats thankfully we don't see too many fur coats today. Then we have billboards or other outdoor ads. And finally, radio or TV shows and podcasts. Now, I know this is this data is a few years old now, but I honestly don't think too much has changed. 
As I said, Earthlings was the documentary that got me started on my vegan transition, along with watching many of the other documentaries that are out there, reading a lot of books, following vegan celebrities, and finally giving up dairy, which was likely the cause of a lot of my painful digestive symptoms. Now, I kind of lied when I said we're all marketers because we've got a smartphone with a camera. That's only part of it. The other part is this. The Canadian government provides upwards of $8 billion in subsidies to the meat, dairy, seafood, and egg industries. In the U.S. and the U.K., that number is in the double-digit billion, double billions. And every time there is a zoonotic disease that spreads among the animals or a natural disaster hits an animal farm, the number goes up even more. And what that means is, out of those billions of dollars, millions are going towards advertising to tell you to buy these products. So every time you see an ad from the Dairy Farmers of Canada, or one that says, get cracking to promote eggs, those are your own tax dollars being re redirected at you to tell you to buy these products. Now, grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, they don't have these advertising budgets and they don't have publicists. In the last couple of years, animal agriculture has become even more aggressive in getting, trying to get federal governments to ban terms like meat, milk, and cheese on the packages of vegan products, and they've been successful in getting the media to report on stories like the unsustainability or unhealthiness of vegan products, such as plant-based milk. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from my presentation, it's this. Women control up to 93% of household spending. That is some real power. That equates to 30 US trillion dollars a year, and by 2030, that number is expected to be 40 trillion US. Women are the most powerful consumers on the planet, and therefore, we're the most powerful marketers. Since 1980, Mothers Against Drunk Driving has been the primary organization bringing awareness to the dangers of driving under the influence of alcohol. Now, imagine if women got together and decided we wanted to shift our subsidies and tax dollars away from animal ag and toward more plant and fungi based industries. Or if we wanted our families to eat more whole food plant based diets. If more women in the world wanted to go vegan and did, the rest of the world would follow. <clears throat> Now I have a couple more tips for both the vegans and omnivores on how you can all be better vegan marketers, even if you never go vegan with just your, with mostly just your smartphone. So for, if you do identify as vegan, don't be afraid to use the word vegan everywhere. Use it in your social media bios, in your professional bios, in your resumes. We need to start normalizing this term and associating it with a lifestyle that people want to achieve. Kindness goes a long way. Vegans are known for being angry, and we have every right to be because we know what happens to animals in these industries. But the more that we can highlight the positive results and benefits of going vegan, rather than yelling pe at people online and being the vegan police, we'll have more success in getting people to live this lifestyle. Transformation stories are so powerful whether that's your own vegan transformation story, that of a friend that you have, or people like Rich Roll, Kevin Smith, and Chuck Carroll, who will be speaking on this stage later today, those, they have had incredible physical and health transformations. So don't be afraid to share those stories because they are influential and they make a difference. We definitely need less dead animals online and more vegan content. So don't be afraid to share your favorite vegan dishes, vegan restaurants, clothing brands, beauty brands, vegan celebrities you follow, your vegan friends, all of this will help. And if you are a parent, maybe you do take your kids to the zoo or aquarium once a year, but you don't have to share that content. Instead, share when you take your family to the local animal sanctuary and share photos of animals being saved, 
instead of ones that are being consumed or exploited. Did you know that you can feed a family on less of a budget with a whole food plant-based diet instead of putting meat, dairy, seafood, and eggs on your plates? I love sharing deals that I find at the grocery store. So you can also share deals that you find on plant-based products at your grocery store or the hacks that help you cook great vegan dishes in the kitchen. Be creative. If you consider yourself an online activist, you can start a website and appear in the media and further the conversation about the importance of veganism. And if you love talking, you can start a podcast or a YouTube channel of your own and be like people like Tabitha Brown, Simon Hill, Daniel Morgan Jones, who have gathered hundreds of thousands or even millions of followers. And finally, tell your government representatives to endorse the plant-based treaty and divert our subsidies away from animal agriculture and toward more plant and fungi-based industries. You can also tell them you want to ban ads on animal products like the residents of two Dutch cities did. And those bans are gonna be implemented in the Netherlands if they haven't already been, implement, been implemented. Now for my founders and business owners, what's the difference between marketing a vegan business and a conventional one? Well, now you know that animal industries have a leg up because of subsidies, but other than that, we all have access to the same tools. I would say the only difference is if you offer a vegan product that is an alternative to, let's say, a food or fashion product, you're gonna have to do a little bit more work in messaging to tell consumers why they should buy your product versus the animal default. George Monbiot said it takes 10 times the effort to dismantle dis misinformation than it is to put out. So we really have our work cut out for us. I'm gonna zero in for just a few minutes on food businesses because this is where we can make the most amount of difference. People eat three times a day. So if you sell, a product that is an alternative to the animal version. It must be just as easy to prepare. It must taste delicious. It must match in price or be cheaper, and it must be readily available. Those four things are really important. Sensory appeal is so important. You must share photos and videos that make our mouths water and use descriptive language, phrases like rich, buttery, roasted sweet corn, or zesty ginger turmeric sweet potatoes. One restaurant study found that if a dish highlighted taste, texture, and the dish's origin, it helped to sell the dish so much more. So instead of just vegan burger, use juicy, smoky, American-style burger. And instead of just veggie lasagna, use cheesy Italian vegetable lasagna. People care more about what a product is than what it isn't. And we have to do these things to outmarket and outsell animal products. About half of omnivores say that they want to eat, they want to transition and eat more plants for health reasons or if it's cheaper. So if your product does have health benefits, you've got to highlight that right on the front of your package. So, what, so whether it's high in iron, calcium, fiber, good for the gut. And if you do have a product with a protein source, you've got to identify what that protein source is right away. That's really important for all of the health and fitness conscious folks out there. Omnivores say that they prefer to see the terms plant protein, plant-based or 100% plant-based, veggie, non-dairy or dairy-free instead of the word vegan, but I say we've got to normalize that term. Using vegan can set you apart from both your vegan and non-vegan competitors. And if you're still afraid to use the V word on the front of a package, you can always put it on the back. So to recap, the most successful vegan food companies are just as easy to prepare as their animal counterpart. They, ch they taste just as good or even better. They match in price or are, or are cheaper. They're readily available. They highlight sensory appeal with great photos, videos, and descriptive language. 
They highlight that it's vegan in some way, and they highlight the health benefits, especially the protein source. Now we've got a few more tips for all types of vegan businesses. Again, as I mentioned earlier, stories are incredibly powerful. You've got to share your story and share it often, whether it's why you created your company, why your company is vegan, why you yourself are vegan, you've got to share those stories. Don't be afraid to market to vegan consumers if you're just starting out. Vegan consumers are some of the most loyal consumers on this planet. The success of companies like Beyond Meat and Oatly were built on vegan consumers who then spread the word to our omnivore friends. Was anybody at the Highway Cafe pop-up at To Live For Bakery last year? Maybe? Okay, I waited four and a half hours for my food. The last customer, Bear, waited six hours. That is what vegan, vegan consumers will do for the companies that we want to support. So if you're just starting out and building up your following, don't be afraid to market to vegan consumers. Finally, be known for a marketing tactic. If you master a marketing tactic and do it over and over again, chances are consumers will remember your brand when they're choosing between you and a competitor shopping online or in store. Now I'm going to show a few video examples of vegan companies. And the first is of a company called Midday Squares in Montreal, Quebec. They sell functional plant-based chocolate bars and they're known, they have built a cult following in the last five or six years because they're known for their reality TV style documenting. They share absolutely everything that's going on in their company. And this is a fun video that they did to announce they were being distributed at Sprouts in the US. My next example is of this, a plant-based meat alternative company in the UK, and they're known for secretly filming their publicity stunts. So in 2021, they took out a booth at the European Pizza and Pasta Show in Europe, and they didn't tell samplers that they were not giving out meat. And my last, it's so good, right? Applause deserved. My last example is Oatly, based in Denmark, which is known for being quirky, weird, and poking fun at itself. So last year, they took some old American milk commercials and slapped their brand on them. I'm going to leave you with a quote from my marketing guru, Pinky Cole, the founder of Slutty Vegan, one of the fastest growing fast food chains in the US. And she says, you've got to be a marketing genius. If I've got people running and getting excited about my brand, they'll tell a friend, he'll tell a friend, he'll tell a friend, and I'll have everybody talking and coming back to my business. So go forth and be a great vegan marketer. I believe in you. Thank you. I'm pretty sure I introduced you as a lucid thinker. Like, just clarity. <laughs> uh, it was like... Point by point by point, here we go, we're going to walk you through this, anybody can do this. That's what it felt like. At the end of it, I was like, man, there's some things about the next one we can do. Mission succeeded. <laughs> uh, but no, well done. Thank you, Sandra. I uh, appreciate you sharing those things.